When I got my license, I bought a Toyota RAV4. Why? Because it was practical, stylish, reliable, and one of the most popular cars on the market at the time. Fast forward many, many years, and nothing's changed. Okay, it doesn't have the cool rims and the subwoofers in the boot like mine did, plus it's done a lot of growing up since then. But there are many reasons as to why this car is Australia's most popular medium SUV. Even this entry-level model will have you waiting around a year until it's in your garage. Worth the wait? We're going to find out. But in the meantime, make sure you like, subscribe and click that bell icon so you get notified when videos like this one go live. Also, my full review is down below or if you're on YouTube, head over to drive.com.au. In terms of pricing, the 2022 RAV4 GX will set you back $34,400 plus on-road costs. The GX also comes in a hybrid in both front and all-wheel drive versions. The heavy lifting is done by a two-litre naturally aspirated four-cylinder petrol engine paired to a continually variable transmission and sending power to the front wheels. It produces 127 kilowatts and 203 newton meters. We'll check out what this all means in the real world soon, but first, let's talk features. As standard, the GX gets wide Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system, automatic high beam, cloth seat trim, a premium leatherette steering wheel, heated power folding exterior mirrors, LED daytime running lights and tail lights, and front and rear parking sensors. Plus, with the recent facelift, the GX scored new standard features, including DAB digital radio, rear seat belt reminder, and LED interior lights. The boot is really generous, 580 litres, one of the biggest in its class. This boot floor is really durable. Underneath, there's a space saver spare wheel. There's also some storage on the side. It's really wide as well. And once you flick these rear seats down, you get 1,690 litres of cargo space. If I was a passenger in this car, I'd be pretty happy. It's really comfortable back here and very roomy. Have a look at this. That's my driving position and that there is my leg room. Really generous. Same with toe and headroom. In terms of niceties, you get dedicated air vents, two USB ports, a seat back pocket. There's door bins. They're not huge, but enough room for a bottle. And you also get a fold down armrest with two cup holders in here. Plus, these seats have a really nice recline on them. For families, there are two ISOFIX mounting points, and in the way of safety, this RAV4 boasts a five-star ANCAP safety rating and gets autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and daytime cyclist detection, lane departure warning, lane trace assist, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, traffic sign recognition, and auto high beam. However, it does miss out on some features that others in its class pack as standard, such as a 360 camera, tyre pressure monitoring system, and driving fatigue alert. While cruise control can detect pedestrians at night, but not cyclists. Up front, there's no major changes in here from the previous model, but it's not really needed. It's simple, but still really stylish in here and fresh looking. Now, practicality was certainly on the forefront because there's heaps of storage throughout. There's a little cubby up front. There's also a little space here, which I thought was room for the key, but it doesn't fit. So it must be for all the coins that people don't use anymore. But two really decent sized cup holders, another cup holder in each door bin, and also a generous sized middle compartment. In terms of connectivity, there are three USB ports up front as well. You get one right near the cubby here, and then two in the center compartment. In this model, you get an eight inch touchscreen infotainment system, which is a little bit smaller in comparison to other brands in the class and their entry level models, but it does all work well. You get these nice shortcuts around the screen. It is getting a little bit older in terms of the icons and the look and the feel of it, but everything can also be controlled here on the steering wheel with these controls. There's no dual climate control in here, which could be a little bit of a problem for my passenger because I tend to run very cold. But otherwise, really like these black rubbery dials, really nice textured gear stick as well. In fact, all the fabrics in here are quite premium looking, keeping in mind that this is a base model. I really like the cloth on these seats, very comfortable and lots of soft touches along the dash. You don't really see too many hard plastics until you get a little bit further down on the dash or on the doors. All Toyotas are covered by a five-year unlimited kilometre warranty. And in the way of servicing, visits are required every 12 months or 15,000 kilometres. Servicing costs will set you back $230 per year for the first five years, totaling $1,150, which is pretty cheap. 
I'm on the road in the RAV4 GX, and as mentioned earlier, this is the two liter four cylinder petrol engine. Now, Toyota is renowned for their hybrid engine, and with good reason, it is exceptional. The hybrid's actually the best selling in the RAV4 range. However, if that's not your flavor, then this is plenty of car. No, it doesn't have excessive power, but it does exactly what it says on the box. It works perfectly as an everyday driver and a great family car. Even without impressive power, this drive is pretty faultless. It's smooth, it's seamless, and the steering is perfectly weighted, making it really precise into corners. Another thing to mention is that even though this doesn't have really big numbers on paper, it still manages to deliver with its instantaneous throttle response. There are three modes to choose from in here. Eco will obviously assist with your efficiency. Sport mode makes it that little bit sharper, but I have just been keeping it in normal mode because there really isn't that much of a boost between sport and normal. Now, as this car has a continually variable transmission or CVT, they can make quite a lot of noise, especially, I'll give it a bit of a rev. So when you're trying to get it up to speed, up to that higher rev range, you really can notice it. But once you're in a consistent groove or out on the freeway, it's not as dramatic. In terms of fuel efficiency, Toyota claims six litres per 100 kilometres. I've been doing mainly urban driving today and really no freeway whatsoever. So I am sitting a little bit higher at the moment at 7.2 litres per 100 kilometres, but I haven't been running back and forth to the fuel station. And good news is that this still can be filled up with 91 unleaded. One thing I noticed when I took this car a little bit further out of town is that it didn't absorb those harsher roads and bumps as well as I thought it would. But the trade-off is, is that unless you're listening to that CVT, there's really not too much noise reverberating in the cabin. So besides for a few low lights, I really have enjoyed this drive. It's refined, it's comfortable, it's got great all-round visibility, and it serves its purpose, making for a really easy, enjoyable, everyday drive. So there you have it, the Toyota RAV4 GX. Still stylish, still practical, and an exceptional everyday drive. Worth the wait? I think so. As the saying goes, the longer you wait for something, the more you appreciate it when you have it. Thanks for watching. Let us know your thoughts on the Toyota RAV4. Would you buy one? Maybe you're on the wait list. Let us know in the comments below. Also like, subscribe, and click the bell icon so you get notified when videos like this one go live.